His critics say he's a secretive oligarch who pulls all the strings in a country caught between Europe and Russia. His supporters say he's just a businessman turned politician with his nation's interests at heart. But who is the man who many know as Moldova's puppet master? And what lies behind murky allegations of blackmail, hitmen and a billion dollar bank fraud? Moldova is one of Europe's poorest and most troubled nations, and many people here think they know why. Some blame a billion dollar fraud which bankrupted the country. Others point to the post-Soviet Republic's complex relations with East and West. But almost everyone, even the president, seems to agree on one thing, that it's impossible to disentangle Moldova's problems from the power and influence wielded by one man. Vlad Plahotnuk, otherwise known as the Puppet Master. Moldova is a government government, but when all the institutes of власти are controlled by parties or leaders who do not have the support of the majority of the Republic of Moldova, it's bad, it's not legitimate. The inexplicable goings on in the life of Plahotnuk leader of Moldova's Democratic Party, a partner in the governing coalition, are the stuff of spy fiction. Huge wealth, an attempted assassination, and accusations of blackmail and bank fraud. Мифичен, и он интересен, как некий такой, как вы сказали, Джеймс Бонд. Barred in 2016 from becoming prime minister because of corruption allegations, Plahotnuk nevertheless took control of parliament, pushing through a new electoral system that many ordinary Moldovans feared would guarantee his grip on the country. Everybody knows that the only place where decisions are taking place is the, is the office of Mr. Plahotnuk. So when last month's election resulted in a hung parliament, with his party coming third, what did it mean for the Republic and the Machiavellian figure who exercises so much influence? We went to find out. Sandwiched between Romania and Ukraine, Moldova is one of Europe's least known countries. Once it was the richest of the Soviet republics, for decades the breadbasket of the USSR. But following the collapse of the Soviet Union, it has fallen on hard times. In 1992, a bitter civil war saw a tiny sliver of land break away from Moldova to form the new Republic of Transnistria. Almost a thousand people lost their lives in the conflict. 3,000 were wounded, many made homeless. Today, Transnistria is recognized only by Russia. It's a time capsule of what life was like in the glory days of the Soviet Union. It's where Russia's massive 14th Army is based, just 40 minutes from the Moldovan capital, Kisnan. Troops in a frozen conflict that could heat up any second. Pulled by both the EU and the Kremlin in a geopolitical tug of war, Moldova's fragile democracy is under attack. That's why we have this phenomenon of state capture. Because of geopolitical clashes, because of geopolitical war, yes, between America and Russia. And that's why Mr. Plokhotnyuk is saying and uh, staying here in power, and he is laughing. His detractors accuse him of sinister connections, of being the man behind the curtain who controls everything that moves in the country. Although these are allegations Plahotnuk routinely and vehemently rejects, his critics refuse to let up. 
Plahotniuk is the man who captured the state institutions, starting from the government, parliament, uh, prosecutor office, national bank, the center of combating corruption, and he's using the state for his uh, own interest. Although direct links have never been proven, his opponents say that particular questions remain about whether the oligarch was tied to one of Moldova's most notorious financial scams. In the winter of 2014, fraudulent loans amounting to over a billion dollars were made from three major Moldovan banks during a three-day period. The country's national bank was forced to cover the loss. Fallout from the crime for which only a handful of minor figures were held responsible, continues to impoverish the country. For Moldovan GDP, it's 12%, and the problem is that this many have been put on the shoulders of taxpayers. So we have to return this money, actually a double amount, uh, during 25 years. Many people are having to sell their belongings in order to get by. Legislation passed by Parliament last year made it practically impossible to recover the stolen money. It came with a draft law that, in fact, has been um, proposed as an attempt to help businesses, but in reality it was an attempt to free from legal liability people involved in the bank fraud. Anger at the government erupted into street protests. What is characteristic for this crime? That the state has participated in this. So, um, we are almost five years away from this crime and no one cent was recuperated. We wanted to ask Blahodnuk about this and other issues, but neither he or any representative of the Democratic Party responded to our numerous requests for an interview. There's little doubt, though, that many blame him for Moldova's woes. You can look at all the public opinion polls. He is the most hated person politician in the country. It was perhaps then unsurprising in April 2017 when 17 people were detained and accused of plotting to assassinate the oligarch. Money and weapons were seized, including grenade launchers and Kalashnikovs. But his opponents say it was all a stunt to gain sympathy for the deeply unpopular oligarch. The perpetrators conveniently photographed themselves drawing a plan of attack over a map of the global business center where Plahotnik has his office. People who plan an assassination and they do not stay, you know, in front of the camera, turn it to their faces, to the camera, to show that they are planning some kind of an assassination. I'm absolutely sure that that is a fake assassination, uh, artificially uh, organized or invented by, by him and he, his people. The assassination claim came as Blahotnuk had just embarked on a charm offensive. Vlad Blahotnuk a trecut și pe la centrul de zi pentru bătrini. Seeking to present himself as a kindly father figure to the nation. Sunt aici ca să vă aduc acea doză de bucurie, poate o rază de lumină atât cât voi putea eu. More importantly, he wanted to be seen as a true patriot, capable of standing up to Russia. He tries to sell to the West the idea that even though he's an oligarch, now at the moment he's the only one who can stop Russian tanks not entering in the region. Знаете, есть хорошая пословица на русском языке, я не знаю, как ее перевести на английском. Сукин сын, но наш. Plahotnuk's media interests gave wall-to-wall -wall coverage to the alleged assassination. But after some months, others chose to focus on dramatic developments from an earlier murder attempt in London in 2012. The target was a Russian banker 
German Gorbenstoff, a business rival of Plahotnuk, who was shot four times by a professional hitman. What grabbed the headlines was that the gunman Vitaly Proker, serving time in a Romanian prison for another crime, chose this moment to admit the attack on Gorbenstoff. He then alleged that it had been carried out at the behest of Plahotnuk, whose hands are in blood up to their elbows. Știți ceva, domnul Vlad Plahotniuc? Eu știu ce am făcut și dumneata știi ce-i comandat și ar fi bine ca dumneata să-ți asumi. A făcut mult rău, înțelegi? Chiar a făcut rău. Eu v-am spus-o și mă repet. Plahotniuc dismissed Proca's accusation and denied any involvement in the crime. But the story was given airtime by Journal TV, one of the few Moldovan media outlets outside the oligarch's control. It was a rare demonstration of independence. Many independent journalists we spoke to complained about harassment, prompting some to leave the country. When I was a journalist in Moldova, there was a statement for me. On one occasion, Solovyev chased after his pursuers. But most of them drove off in a car, leaving one behind. Despite this individual being identified, no police investigation was carried out. Such episodes are not isolated. When high-profile investigative journalist Natalia Marari published an open letter to Blahotnuk containing the following sentences, you will never become the one you always wanted to be, the legitimate leader of Moldova. In the shadows, yes, surreptitiously, yes, but never legitimately. She claims she received threats of blackmail with an intimate tape from a Plahotnik associate. It was video made in my apartment, which I was renting. It was my apartment, so it was not me in a hotel, me in a car, me. It was my home, so they got into my home uh, filming me making sex. Marori went public with the threat and received nationwide sympathy. Eu v-am promis că vă voi explica de ce am ieșit astăzi cu inscripția Zâmbiți vă filmează camera ascunsă. Așa s-a întâmplat că ieri am fost anunțată că într-un cunoscut holding mi se pregătește un sex tape, o casetă cu caracter. Once again, no action was taken by the police and Plahotnuk denied responsibility. But as the February 2019 election approached, there was growing concern that blackmail and smears might play a part in the coming vote. As campaigning got underway against a background of inadequate funding and a largely hostile media, candidates from Akum, the pro-Western party, and socialist pro-Russian party came onto the streets in freezing temperatures to canvas for votes. Plahotnuk's party, the Democrats, were able to draw on the oligarch's media monopoly to target opposition candidates. Телеканал Prime TV официально обратился в посольство и дипломатические миссии, аккредитованные в Республике Молдова, для мониторинга парламентских выборов. Причиной такого шага стала тревожная ситуация, сложившаяся в связи с частыми словесными нападками на журналистов со стороны представителей избирательного блока АКУМ. АКУМ, a party largely untainted by charges of corruption, is one of Plahotnuk's bitterest opponents. Their joint leader, Maya Sandu, went touring the provinces ahead of the vote. As well as explaining her party's policies, she was having to deal with yet another smear. 
a website whose owners couldn't be traced, were showing pictures and a video purporting to be Sandu kissing another woman. We claim that one of them was me, which is not true. They don't even show the, uh, the faces. Um, and just wanted to, you know, to, to come up again, to use this again, to scare people so that uh, we would lose more votes before the elections. Whoever was behind it, in such a conservative country, the smear threatened to be acutely damaging, especially in the north of the country, where traditions are strong. Support for the pro-Russian Socialist Party was almost a given here. We are part of Russia for 200 years. We were part of the Soviet Union. We don't like, for example, I don't know, feminism, generally speaking. We don't, we don't go on gay marches, you understand me? Don't go. These people are the old believers. Many thousands in rural areas belong to this branch of Christianity, which dates back centuries to before the time of Peter the Great. Мы вообще себя никогда не отделяем от России. Вот русские старобрядцы всегда для них это вот это, конечно, родина наша, где мы родились, где живем, это наша родина, конечно же, Молдовия есть моя родина, но этническая вот принадлежность, она очень ощущается. Наши предки русские, мы как-то всю жизнь вот на Россию у нас ориентир. Fruit production destined for Russia is the mainstay of the economy here. There is little appetite for closer ties to Europe. Для нас самое главное, чтобы можно было отдать свою продукцию, можно было реализовывать вот продукт. У нас же физический труд в основном. Still in the north, and not far away, is the town of Soroki, one of the most important Roma communities in Europe, which perhaps more than anywhere else demonstrates how far Moldova has slipped since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Lining the streets are gypsy palaces modelled on World Heritage buildings. Now mostly derelict, they bear testimony to a standard of living enjoyed by Roma which is unimaginable nowadays. Roma Baron Arta Sarari is nostalgic for the past. In the Soviet Union, to live, the average minimum was normal, and so on. But now, you earn the same dollars, the same euro. Как их берешь, так они уходят, как вода. Ничего, нету ценного. We, Soviet Union, the most powerful country in the world, 30 years ago, everybody was afraid of us. And now everybody was laughing and saying, you are nobody. That's why we should uh, turn back to Russia and we should be the guys we used to be. For Moldova's younger metropolitans, it's a different story. They see their future in the West. Some weeks into the election campaign, Natalia Morari set off to address a crowd of would-be voters. We never ever uh, speak to them about which party they should vote, because this campaign is not about, it's, it's not a political party. She was part of a group of journalists and musicians traveling the length of the country. They were visiting towns and cities in a bid to persuade people to vote. And to get people to see beyond Moldova's bribery-ridden electioneering. Fără 
Dar chiar dacă noi am fi avut bani, noi oricum am fi venit fără cârnăciori, fără hrișcă și fără cadouri, pentru că asta este o milință și o băjocără în față de dumneavoastră. But it was an uphill battle to overcome growing disillusionment with a corrupt political system. Not least said Plahotnik's opponents, as he has a habit of cancelling elections if they don't go according to plan. They point to the case of Andrei Nastasi, joint leader of Akum. After convincingly winning last June's mayoral election in Kisinau, the vote was inexplicably declared void by the Supreme Court. Такого случая. Но э, это как раз показывает э, методы, э, которым может прибегать вот режим такого типа, который у нас сейчас. An international row over the decision led to an EU freeze on a much needed aid package, which will inevitably further affect Moldova's poorest people. Abject poverty has already led to a third of the population leaving the country, driving many vulnerable youngsters into the hands of traffickers. It's estimated that one Moldovan in every hundred has been trafficked. People like Elena, who was taken by smugglers, raped and forced to beg for them, even after becoming pregnant and giving birth to a girl. You know, when a не нужна никакая табличка, понимаете? Потому что у меня ребенок грудной, она и до сих пор грудная. И оставлять я ее не могла тоже. Там, например, на базаре на полчаса могла постоять, потому что, чтобы долго с ребенком не стоять на улице. There were more political shenanigans just days before the vote when the Central Electoral Commission threatened to ban the socialists on the basis that President Dodon, himself a socialist, was supporting the party, which as head of state he should refrain from, prompting yet more protests. In the event, the socialists were not excluded, which according to some of Vlad Plahotnik's critics was surely no accident. Dodon is junior partner of Plahotnik and they are playing different roles. Plahotnyuk is presenting himself as the leader of pro-European party. Dodon is playing the role of anti-European pro-Russian party. A kind of threat to the European future of Moldova, which is used by Plahotnyuk in his discussions with the West. I think they are both interested in one thing, keeping Moldova in the grey area, where they can design the, rule, the, the rules of the game, they can change the laws, they can do whatever they want. When the election results came through, Akun, the Socialists and Plahotnik's Democrats each took between 25 and 30 percent of the vote, resulting in a hung parliament. Of 101 seats, Dodon's party took 35, the Democrats 30, leaving 26 for Akun. On the face of it, with no clear winner, there was a chance for change. But optimism is in short supply and post-election maneuvering is something Moldova's most powerful politician excels at. Noi cei din Partidul Democrat, noi nu suntem supărați pe nimeni, nu avem politicieni cu care nu acceptăm să discutăm, noi nu avem subiecte care nu vrem să le discutăm, noi nu vom pune condiții, dar nu vom accepta nici condiționalități. In Moldova, there's a growing acceptance that someone who is neither prime minister nor president is calling the shots. In a country where the checks and balances of democracy are clearly not working, there seems to be little that anyone can do to change things. Господин Плохотнюк стал таким собирательным образом страхов, комплексов, каких-то непонятных даже ситуаций. Что делает Плохотнюка сильным? Это наш страх. 